En la escuela de nosotros tenemos hoyos en las paredes. Nos faltan libros y también hay mucho de respeto, mucha falta de respeto a nuestros padres y a nuestros niños. Hay cosas donde se necesita el dinero para arreglar, pero hay cosas que se pueden arreglar sin dinero. El año pasado me invitó Saket a que viniera a hablar. Para que yo hablara acerca de los retos que yo tengo para transferir a mi hijo que tiene necesidades especiales o discapacidades dentro de PPS. Yo fui la única padre, madre que estuve en ese panel. Y fui la única madre de color que estuve en esa reunión, pero también fue la única madre donde me llamó la directora a su oficina y también la que me pararon cuando yo fui a ser voluntaria en el salón de mi hijo. Cuando ustedes dicen, ¿por qué no participan la gente de color en este tipo de eventos, este tipo de, de situaciones? Es porque nosotros recibimos la venganza, no recibimos lo que es, es que ellos se salen con la suya o se desquitan con nosotros y con nuestros hijos que están sufriendo esa negatividad cuando están en su salón de clase. Y yo he estado llamando a varias a personas en el distrito de, de, de público de escolar para decirles y platicarles lo que yo he estado sufriendo, la discriminación, y ustedes están permitiéndolo. Esto es el, el personal de PPS que ha estado discriminándome y al no arreglarlo, se lo están condonando, y eso es parte del problema también. Eso no significa nada. Está bien bonito que se escriba la equidad y la diversidad, pero si no se vive y no se habla, no se trabaja, no significa para nada. Mi hijo estaba desaparecido, estuvo a más de tres millas y solamente tres personas de la escuela estuvieron interesados en buscarse y no sabíamos nosotros por qué. Durante todo el día nadie nos había contactado para decirnos qué estaba pasando. Se tiene que vivir una póliza de día a día en la escuela, si no es solamente un papel. The other thing is you guys spend a lot of money contracting with our culturally specific partners who hand pick parents to come and sit at forms. You are not talking to the majority of people that you need to hear from. If you're only hearing from a hand select group of people, you're going to get the results you're looking for. También ustedes están gastando mucho dinero en subcontratar con grupos que supuestamente son muy diversos, pero están escogiendo de mano selectivamente, de dedazo, a las personas o a los padres que quieren que vengan a decir lo que ustedes quieren escuchar. Y eso quiere decir que no están escuchando de toda la gente en general lo que está sucediendo. Um, like I said, I grew up here. 
Como dije, yo crecí aquí, fui con mucha gente de diferentes nacionalidades. Y nunca me tocó ir a hablar con una tercera persona que no fuera blanca. I don't understand why PPS has to contract other people to speak to families of color. Yo no entiendo por qué PPS tiene que subcontratar con otra gente de color para que puedan hablar con la gente de color. Address us directly. We are sitting here in a form right here, and I know I speak English, so I know you guys can understand what I'm saying. Right. So I don't feel that I should have to go through a third-party agency for them to translate to you what I say. Yo estoy, por ejemplo, aquí hablando con ustedes directamente y no entiendo por qué yo tengo que ir a una tercera persona, a tercera agencia, para que traduzcan lo que yo estoy hablando. Yo hablo inglés. Entonces, no entiendo por qué se tiene que traducir cuando ellos pueden escucharme directamente y resolverlo. Estos son los tipos de foros que tenemos que estar teniendo donde vienen los padres de su punto de vista, porque todo lo que se tiene que tomar en consideración las preocupaciones, lo que estamos diciendo, porque todo lo que se toma aquí en cuenta y las decisiones afectan a nuestros niños. And parents, while you guys are saying you guys had on there the anti-harassment and the bullying and the cyberbullying, you need to add on there retaliation by your staff. And bullying by your staff needs to be addressed. Add that on the agenda. También ustedes tienen que añadir el bullying por parte del personal del staff, el desquite, porque eso también está afectándolos. El desquite por parte del staff también tiene que ser considerado como bullying. Thank you, sir. Gracias. I just want to say something really quick. My name is Raisa Lyles, and I have a five-year-old daughter. She's a superstar, and I, my stand on the lottery is that I don't think it should be completely abolished because there are children like her who want to be in the different art programs and or science programs or whatnot, and they don't live in the neighborhood. I live in a good neighborhood. I live in the Beaverton School District, but I still would like her to go to a program that's going to cater to her you know, diva needs in dance and music, etc. Um, and so that's kind of my stance on it. But I just wanted to point out that it's absolutely ridiculous and pathetic that we are sitting here discussing how horrible the Portland, Oregon school district is. I just think I've traveled all over the United States. I've been to different schools and see how horrible their programs are. And we live in such a beautiful city and such a beautiful state that has resources and money, but it's being appointed where it wants to be appointed and we have to point that out as well and look at the bigger picture, not just single out just the lottery or this or that, but the bigger picture that schools are, are literally have leaking ceilings. No school in Portland, Oregon should have leaking ceilings with kids sitting in the seat and waters dripping on their head. Yo solo quiero decir que a, a mí, yo pienso que no debería de quitarse por completo la lotería y que pueda ayudar, pero equitativamente a personas, por ejemplo, nosotros somos de color, me gustaría que mi hija pudiera eh, ir a una escuela donde pudiera, por ejemplo, ser, eh, aprender arte o, o cuestiones artísticas donde ella pudiera desplayarse más a gusto. Eh, también no debe de haber ninguna escuela con agujeros de goteos, por ejemplo, no debe de haber esas tipos de situaciones. And I do want to also add that I think it's we should look at the system of having to fight and try to plead with a board of vetted people who half don't probably don't even have children. One, two, the other half that have children, they're probably in private schools. So why should we have to go through people that cannot relate with us? On our needs. It's absurd. It needs to ir a través de una mesa directiva que ni siquiera ha de tener hijos eh, pequeños o tal vez sus hijos no van a las escuelas públicas, van a las escuelas privadas. And Jasmine, before you go up there, before you give them the statement, will you make a statement again to people that might have come in after we started so that they'll know why we're here? Absolutely. There is a lack of informed consent on how the process of, tra of the transfer policy will impact Portland school children. Don't Shoot Portland is asking that the board delay this vote to enable transparency for the parents whose children are directly impacted. We stand 
with PDX Kids for Justice and ask that supporters join us at the board meeting during which the vote on special policy implementation is scheduled to take place. All right, and we know that's not happening today. Nope. Any other parents had anything, anything that they want to say? Oh, I've got one right here. And she can translate for herself. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there is anyone else that can translate. <laughs> Um, I'm Maria Damaris, and um, Mrs. Smith knows me very well, and the board knows me very well. Um, I did take a lot of time, you know, the first year to come to you and talk to you, and I'm going to cry because every time I talk to the board, I cry, and I just feel like I just feel like there is I don't know I don't know I don't know what it takes to to soften your heart so you will listen to parents because I've been very active since my daughter started kindergarten in a neighborhood a regular elementary school where my husband lived And I joined the, the school of Riegler, and I've, uh, I've spent so many hours of my personal hours as a single mom, because dad doesn't live with us, to make Riegler a better school. I even created the first some program for kindergartners, which we didn't have it. I was teaching Spanish and music because there were no place where kindergartners can go and I created also I co-chair the kinder the kindergarten group I think that's the name right Nathan that's the name what was the kinder group or something like that um, I I started this group you know last year we're talking about which year is it uh, September 2012 in kinder, when Maya was in kinder. Um, and that's a lot of work that I did as I got the kinder level to try to better, you know, the school at Riegler. And, and then in the summer, we heard last year, last summer, that, that the, you know, like, that the, our principal who was doing great things, she was gonna have to decide between funding, you know, a reading a specialist or you know, to cut the restorative justice person and the student management person and the black community liaison. There's 86% of kids of color are regular. Many of them Latinos, the majority, but there's a lot of black kids. This is 86% of kids of color. And you there to cut the African American community <laughs> liaison, putting this burden on the principal to make that decision. Teachers want kids to pass the test, so of course they will go to the side for the reading specialist and they cut the student management, where there is a lot of work that was done, it was very good. And I joined the board, which is all white, gave a lot of hours to try to better this. I started to help, you know, in whatever it was possible, I became the, Spanish, you know, community liaison, and I know there's gonna be retaliation. I know that the superintendent is gonna call the principal in my school, and I know that I'm gonna probably be kicked out of Riegler or whatever reason they will fight to retaliate against me because I'm not speaking right now. Nonetheless, I think this is the right thing to do. We came with a lot of parents from drillers to testify to your boards. We ask you not to cut all these positions that we're helping. We were in the Oregonian with our fifth graders showing how good is that model that is working regular, even though it's poor, even it's one of the poorest schools in Portland, even though it has 100% free and reduced lunch, even though we have 86% of kids of minority, we were making a difference. Yet you did not hear us and you did cut our money, our budget, or you did not give us another extra reading specialist and left our principal to make that decision. And because she was communicating effectively with parents, you took away our principal from Riegler and we were against it. 
You did not hear us. We said, no, we don't want you to take away our, our principal. Nathan just mentioned it in his paper. She was doing great things. Did you care? No. Did you came to in the summer to talk about how you were going to choose a better principal or the ideal principal or a principal that was going to fulfill our needs? You already had her in mind. You did not take into account our comments or our concerns, that room where, where the PPS person came, it was full of parents that were against you bringing another principal. There were at least, I don't know how many, Nathan, how many parents were there at the, at the PPS when they wanted to talk about, when, yeah, when they came to talk about bringing a new principal? Like a, at least 60 parents or? Yeah, yeah. there were a lot of parents and we all talk against that you did not listen, you did not care. So you left us with kids to deal with their own issues, with their own problems, with their own frustrations. You left us with teachers focusing on getting all these scores, doing these tests, with no student management specialist to deal, to help us in the cafeteria, to help us at recess. You left us, you cut out the black person. Whatever it was the decision that it was made, you did not bring another person. You could have replaced it with another African American liaison if that was the issue. You you also cut the restorative justice. And I don't know if people in the board really understand how restorative justice works. I don't think you know because it hasn't been implemented in this country. No it does work in Mexico. Restorative justice is if, if a kid does something, you don't suspend him, you don't yell and you don't humiliate him. You put that kid to understand his situation, you raise awareness on him, and you put him to work with the kids or the people that he created the problem. So he will be someone that will not retaliate or he will not become a bully or whatever is the reason or the situation. You cut the restorative justice for not a school, knowing that it was benefiting us, knowing that it was creating you know what I was left? It was September, I was like, what's going to happen? Who's going to be in the playground? Who's going to be in the cafeteria? We had only, how many years we had? Only three or four? How many? Yeah, and, 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 and after we complaining at all your meetings, we even went to Madison, the, principal, the superintendent was there. After complaining, you even gave us a little bit of another EA, I think, you know, a few hours to finish. You know what I did? I, I had no other options that create a new committee. You know what is this committee called? Please, tell them the name of the committee. You were there. You heard me talking about it. You, no, you were there. There's six figures in the pockets of Blinder. That's where all the budget cuts are going. Not pay raise. You know, when I said the name of this committee, all the parents at Madison, I, w I wouldn't say they were mad or they were frustrated. I will say they were shocked. How could you not remember the name of our committee that we created our regular? They don't care. They got gatekeepers that basically make sure that everything they do is done in order. No, your voice Ms. don't Ms. matter. She don't have to she remember. All she okay. got to do is what's part of the record. Whatever they're trying to produce, that's what they the do. This, this, this committee we created, and the new principal that we have met with her at least three times. She knows. It's called the Safety and Bullying Prevention Committee. That's the name of it. What's the name of it? The Safety and Bullying Prevention Committee. And you know why? This is parent volunteers becoming EAs, meaning this is parent untrained volunteer parents willing to step forward to do the teacher's assistant job because you did not give us that money for those positions. How crazy is this? This is a regular, not too far from here, Prescott and 52nd. And this is what we've been doing. And this is what we've been meeting. And you know what? When, when other staff disrespect our kids, we hear it. We're the first one to hear it, and we bring it to the principal. Because teachers are too busy testing or teaching, and because there is no other people to step forward for our kids. And we are telling our principal and our sub-principal what to do. This is ridiculous. I could say more about this, but I'm not going to take more time. 
No. Maybe the dark time, you take it back. No, I, I, no. You know, there is, there is another parent who's here who wants to speak. All I can say is that I went to your Cesar Chavez's school. Mm -hmm. 